hopefully this infographic looks relatively intuitive. I'm going to explain what it means in a second. First, I want to talk about how trinkets could affect this meta that I've kind of created for each of the, the bosses. Castanether had some very strong trinkets for all of the mage specs, actually. It had Soul Igniter and Dreadfire Vessel for fire. It had Cabal's Hymnal and the Zymox Hasted Dot trinket for frost, and then Cabal's Hymnal for Arcane as well. So that could, any one of those things could potentially shake up the single target meta between fire and frost. Not Arcane, though. Arcane just needs actual buffs. <laughs> you know, Cabal's Hymnal's not that strong for Arcane, but... Um, We'll have to see. I think fire is pretty likely to still get externals, so in general will probably win over single target most of the time, which is why a lot of these infographics are going to have fire above frost for single target. But I'll explain a bit more in terms of the, the actual fights once we get there. Looking at Shriekwing, uh, to explain what the infographic means, the top spec is going to be the spec that I think performs the best, then the second best, and then the worst. And sometimes there will be ones that are side by side, like on Huntsman where you see Fire and Arcane side by side, and that just means I think they'll perform equally well at that fight. But to explain my reasoning more in depth, Shriekwing, at least on Mythic, his first immune phase is about a minute 40 seconds in, and that will probably fuck with Arcane's second Arcane power, you know, not great, uh, and it could also potentially mess with Fire's second Combust if it's gained fairies and playing Pyroclasm, or it's tail end of its kind of combust combo if you're running kin lane so frost is probably gonna be the least affected by that but then again frost will be a bit messed up by the forced downtime right either way fire's probably gonna win here trick means not that important a boss huntsman cleave fight frost will win on cleave uh, the tie up between fire and arcane is really just how you're going to handle the ads fires or arcane's four target cleave is quite disgusting so you could see it become quite a bit better than fire because of that if the ads are pulled in at the right time to enable your padding huntsman has a lot of force movement and that just makes fire better because you know what arcane can't deal with can't deal with force movement it's not even that good in single target anyway frost is like i mentioned before slightly weaker in single target right now and probably will remain that way throughout season four um, in my opinion frost is better than fire for most people without externals for both the specs but We'll see how that shakes out because fire will probably be getting externals so in general it'll just be better um and our hunkering does have a lot of movement that would hurt frost so and then going in the order that most people tended to do the boss we are going to talk about zymox next and similar to all the other single player bosses you can see a kind of trend where it was fire frost arcane more so on this fight i do think that fire will come out more ahead than frost the very important thing to mention is death knights are no longer meta there is not going to be you know four to five death knights in all your groups because they're just giga broken and that's a huge problem when it comes to doing the seeds especially during the third phase of zymox where you're getting sucked into the middle and you know what specs are really good at doing that well not the spec the class mage and the spec of the mage that gets the least impacted by having to do the seeds is fire so it's definitely going to be very strong there all right, I have to re record this part on SKS and Inerva because I was doing FR when I did it and you can hear me furiously mashing my buttons. So looking at Sun King, you I've ranked Arcane and, and Fire at the top and then Frost right below that. Simply put, the adverse thing timings are going to be good for Arcane. Um, Arcane is really strong, you know, five or low target burst, even though there's a little bit more than five targets on this. but. So very strong burst, and it will actually be able to meet the timers for the, the cloak quite well. Again, this was a playstyle for Arcane that didn't exist back then, so I think that it'll be interesting to see how it interacts with a lot of these bosses. Fire will be great for the add damage, and it might have problems having Combust where it used to in 9.0 for uh, the cloaks, and that's why I would consider Arcane to probably have an edge on this. but. We'll have to see how the cooldown timings work out. And if you get externals like fairies or whatnot, then you know, everything I say about cooldown timings being different really doesn't matter. Frost, you know, it's, it's burst add damage and then burst single target. So you really just, well, the parts that matter for, for hitting Sun King are burst single target when you need to break the cloak. So not great for Frost, certainly not great for Frost. Looking at Nerva then, 
I have Frost, then Arcane, then Fire. The main point for this is the add damage. I think Frost is the most likely one that's going to be able to actually cleave on the adds consistently. Uh, Arcane has, you know, it's smaller cleave radius of barrage, which can be a bit rough if your tank's tanking it in the wrong place, but I also think that Arcane's cooldowns are going to line up much better to actually hit the adds as opposed to Fire's, again, because of Fire's CD uh, nerf coming out 9.0. So Next up is Council. You might not be able to recognize them. That's because I trimmed their their picture a bit so I could fit it all on screen kind of nicely. So it's just the main guy, like Nick Laos or something. Anyway, I put Fire and Frost as equal here. This is more thinking if the bosses are able to be tanked close together. I believe that wasn't the common practice in most guilds in 9.0, was you tank two of the bosses far away and one close. But if Frost is allowed to get that three target or even two target ramp, then that would be really, really strong for its performance on the boss. Otherwise, Fire and potentially Arcane would just overtake it because of the, the waiter damage, as well as you know, Fire just being stronger single target if Frost doesn't have any type of cleave that it can handle. And then looking at Sludge Fist, I have Arcane as the top spec, which I'll explain in a second, but Fire with the Kenley nerfs can no longer hit the one minute pillar requirements unless you're getting, you know, knife externals. So it's just a worse spec than Arcane on this fight, which will be very interesting. With Arcane, you would just hold your 45 minutes to actually use them every minute on the pillar. Uh, you might be thinking, is this the perfect situation for me to run Clay and have a two minute Arcane power because that's the time Two minutes would be, you know, identical time between uh, two pillars. But no, in my opinion, you would still run Pelagos so that you can arcane power on pole and then on the second pillar and then on the fourth pillar. But that would change if, for instance, uh, you wanted to arcane power on the first pillar because you wanted to less that and the boss didn't last till pillar four, then you would probably play Clea and have your first sigil to use on the first pillar. So either way. I think there's no contest that Arcane is going to win that hands down, except potentially Fire if it gets Mega Externals could compete with it. Frost just can't really do enough damage in a 12 second window to really make it worth. If you get some good RNG, then ramping your Necrolord up to it could be strong, but we'll have to see how that works out, because um, that would be kind of similar to the Lords of Dread ramp that we do right now, except weaker because it's not on two targets. So, In my opinion. I don't think Frost will actually be able to compete with the other two specs. Though again, potentially if Fire doesn't get externals, it could. Alright, the last two bosses. So, SLG. Uh, again, so this is only heroic. I would say Frost is just going to win out because it's essentially just the two target cleave. But if you're looking at Mythic, you have to deal with the approximately one minute ad spawns. Or maybe it's 45 seconds actually. I'm not entirely sure. So whenever the skirmishes spawn, you gotta burst them, you gotta kill them. Fire, who is historically pretty good at that, you can do every other skirmisher set, uh, lined up pretty well. So again, that's where the cooldown problem with Kindling's gonna hurt it. Frost, however, has its Necrolord up for a very long time, and it has its Cleave Frostbolt, so I think that Frost will actually perform quite well on SLG, because it can you know, ramp up during the add phase, and then not just slam the boss is super hard and frost is just a very strong cleave spec anyway so i think they'll be pretty decent there and then arcane as i mentioned before has the shorter cooldowns it's you know small target burst so five or lower burst is insane now with radiant echoes or harmonic echoes so i think the arcane has the potential to do some pretty crazy damage there though it might lean more towards pad and less towards add damage and that's all right sometimes Looking at Denathrius though, Fire will most likely still remain king here. Um, for Heroic and Mythic, actually, in my opinion. I don't think Frost really can hold a candle to its P1 damage. P1 doesn't really matter though. Um, it's P2 damage. Arcane is probably a bit better equipped to handle. I think the adds are too spread out for Frostbolts to actually cleave from Denathrius to both the Cabal's uh, so I don't think Frost is that crazy good in P2 either, I think it'll be decent in P2, but Fire will just pump the boss the entire time, Fire has the strongest P3, has ostensibly the strongest single target, so 
I think we will see most likely fire just being the best spec on Denathrius. Important to mention though is fire will be forced to play Night Fae, so Frost single target could be a lot stronger than fire on this fight because it will be playing Necrolord, so you never know. Overall, that is going to put fire at the top with, and then looking at how I've ranked these specs per boss here, the best spec for Cast Nathria is still going to be fire, and then it will be frost and they'll be arcane. Um, I do think that this is pretty likely a change to be much heavier towards frost for the single target fights. Again, because of the trinkets we might get, and also because for a lot of these fights, fire, if it wants to strong add damage will be forced to play Night Fae, which will make their single target a decent amount weaker. So, And then Arcane, of course, could upset things. Cabal's Timbal is quite strong for it as well. Um, there's nothing really crazy in Sanctum aside from Titanic Ocular Gland that, to really talk about, and I don't, I'm don't. i not familiar with the, the new Mythic Plus trinkets either. Also, I didn't mention the Faded Affixes at all because I haven't seen them in action. So I have no idea how that's going to work out. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully this was interesting. You know, if you have any feedback on this, something you'd like to see about it, whatever, leave in the comments below. Um, I'd be totally interested to do one for Sanctum. I don't think doing one for Sepulchre is really that good, unless it was more of a, a look back on what will be good after, you know, all the boss nerfs has happened. But we'll see. Well, have a good day.